Hi there. An experiment consists of throwing two fair, standard, six-sided dice and noting the sum of the two numbers thrown. If the number is nine or greater, it is recorded as a win, mark W. If the sum is eight or less, it is recorded as a loss. Complete the table below to show all possible outcomes of the experiment. Okay, this table is called a sample space and we can see that there is an L in the space uh, where we add 1 and 2 which gives us 3 which is clearly a loss because it's 8 or less so in the first row we can put L everywhere because if you add 1 to the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 uh, we will get 8 or less similarly the highest number we could get when adding 2 would be adding it to 6 and that gives us 8 so all of the second row will be L's as well However, if we add 3 to 6, we get 9, so that's going to be a win. But if we add 3 to 5, we get a loss, and all the smaller numbers will give us a loss too. If we add 4 to 6, we get a win. If we add 4 to 5, we get a win, and all the smaller numbers will give us a loss. Uh, 5 and 6 has already been done. 5 and 5 gives us 10, so that's a win. 5 and 4 gives us 9, so that's a win. And then... 5 and 3 is 8, so that's a loss, and so are the smaller ones. And in the bottom row, 6 and 6 is 12, 6 and 5, 11, 6 and 4, 10, 6 and 3, 9, so they're all wins. And then 6 and 2 is 8, so that's a loss, and 6 and 1 is 7, so that's a loss. Now, find the probability of a win on one throw of the two dice. Okay, we just need to add up all of the wins, and there are, let's count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of them, out of a possible sample space of 36, so the probability is therefore 10 over 36, which could be simplified to 5 over 18. Find the probability that each of three successive throws of the two dice results in a loss. Give your answer correct to four decimal places. Okay, so we want a loss followed by a loss followed by another loss and when they're followed by we can use the AND rule which is multiply. So the probability of a loss is 1 minus 5 over 18 so that will be 13 over 18 and then we multiply that by 13 over 18 and multiply that by 13 over 18 so we could just raise that to the power of 3 and if we calculate that on the calculator it comes to uh, 0 0.3767164 so to four decimal places we'll have 0 0.3767 okay the experiment is repeated until a total of three wins occurs. Find the probability that the third win occurs on the tenth throw of the dice. Give your answer correct to four decimal places. Okay, well if the third win occurs on the tenth throw, that means there could only have been two wins from the first nine throws. So let's pro find the probability of two wins in the first nine throws, and then we'll include the probability of a win on the tenth throw. So first of all we want the probability of two wins from the first nine throws and that's going to be uh, using the binomial distribution or Bernoulli trials. So if you go to the stats section which is page 33 of your tables you'll see that the probability of... Uh, okay I'll show you what it says here. The probability that x is equal to r is equal to n choose r, p to the r, q to the r, n minus r. Okay, in this case n is 9, 9 throws, r is 2, 2 wins, and p is the probability of a win, so that's um, 5 over 18, and then q is a loss, that's 13 over 18. So the probability, let's just write this out as it would be, that x is 2, namely 2 wins, is 9 choose 2, uh, 5 over 18 to the power of 2, and 13 over 18 to the power of 7. In other words, we want the wins to happen twice, the losses to happen 7 times, 
And there are nine choose two ways of that happening. Okay, and then uh, to include uh, two wins from ninth rules, I'm going to use the word and a win on the third throw, on the tenth, sorry. And when you have and, you, you, you always multiply. So that would be 9 choose 2 times 5 over 18 squared times 13 over 18 to the 7 multiplied by another 5 over 18 because of the win on the 10th throw. And you can tidy that up a bit. So it's 9 choose 2, 5 over 18 cubed, uh, 13 over 17, sorry, 13 over 18 to the power of 7. And we need to calculate that to four decimal places. So we punch all that into the calculator. And we get uh, 0 0.07908. So that will be 0 0.079. Well, let's just write it out as it is here. 0 0.08. And now I'll round it to four decimal places. So the 8 is closer to... Uh, 10 than it is to 0. So that will round that up the fourth decimal place. So 0, 7, 9, 1. And we have four places after the decimal point. It's different to significant figures, this. So you just count the number of places after the decimal point. So there's our answer. It's not a very big probability. It's quite unlikely. And that's the end of this question. Thanks for watching. Join us for the next one.